Hey, welcome back to the Impact Driven Leader Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Dickerhoff. So glad to be here with you today, sharing on this latest episode of the Impact Driven Leader Podcast. Um, thank you for listening. And again, if you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, you have somebody shared this episode with you, you found it, I'd love for you to subscribe. I'd love you to do something else too. And this is for the benefit of those that are tuning in, watching on YouTube. Yes, there's a YouTube channel. You can go watch it, YouTube. Um, Impact Driven Leader YouTube channel. And the link is in the show notes. Or I'd love for you to rate, review this episode. Other people can find it. Share your comments, share your feedback. I recently got an email from John Ellsworth. John shared that, you know, the last episode with John Houston he listened to was so good he listened to it twice. I love being able to share that information with the guests. I love to find that out, hear that. You know, one of the, the great things about this medium is I have no idea who listens. And then I'll get random messages from John or others. And I love that it adds value to you. One of the things that you'll notice today is today there's not a guest. It's a solo show. Uh, and as some people have shared, they've enjoyed a few of these solo episodes. This happened by chance. It wasn't necessarily on purpose. But I'm so glad to be discussing with you the book that's part of the Impact Driven Leader Book Club here for the month of April. Okay, you ready for it? Vision Driven Leader by Michael Hyatt. I've previously had Michael as a guest on the podcast. We talked about his work, his book, Work, uh, When It Works, Succeed at Life, that he wrote with his daughter. And that was back last year. I'll make sure that you can grab that uh, link in the show notes. But today I want to talk about this book, The Vision Driven Leader. And let me share with you, I have kind of a, a platform of books that I'm going to read throughout the year that we're going to read in the book club that we're going to discuss in the roundtable. And what's fun to me is, is just being able to pivot along the way. There, there's a few books. Sometimes I got to find a, you know, between guests, between whatever it may be, you know, here are books that I really want to talk about. You know, Donald Miller's book, Hero on a Mission, that we, you know, went through in March. Man, I thought it was pretty pivotal. In the roundtable, people have gotten tremendous value from the book. I'm pretty sure people will from this one as well. And I also think it's very fitting. Now, why this book came up is I was um, in conversations with a organization that I have to sit on the board of, and we are talking about vision and mission. And I quickly understood that the certain board members just had no idea what it was, and it's no fault to them. I, I was have the luxury of reading this book, The Vision Driven Leader, a couple years ago from Michael Hyatt, and it opened my eyes. It, it opened my eyes so much that I realized everyone needs to read this book. I hosted back in, I believe it was a 2019 when this book came out, a book club, a five-week book club. We went through the book, and I think there was over 150 people that subscribed, joined in that experience. That also led me to developing this, the impact-driven leader, kind of a, a nod there, the vision-driven leader, the impact-driven leader, because I'm driven by impact. But this book has been very pivotal for me. And now, here are the reasons why. I think as we, you know, oftentimes corporate culture, we're like, oh, you need a mission statement, a vision statement. I can remember through my experiences going through those with different organizations, building a company and, and, and trying to write those out in life. I was clueless. I had no idea. Maybe you're sitting there like I was or, or maybe like the organization that I happen to be a part of. And we have these one liners. Oh, this is our vision. And this is our mission. Maybe that's what we think it should be. Well, Michael Hyatt in this book, The Vision Driven Leader, really goes through and clarifies that vision is much different than mission. It, it, it's quite funny that after reading this book and, and talking to people and they'll share their vision or the mission, I'm like, nope, not from what I've been able to learn and see. And then I'm going to break that down for you a little bit today. I'm going to walk you through kind of some high points of, from the book and kind of entice you to read the book along with us. Join the book club, join the community. If you want to join the round table, there's going to be a spot for you available. That's going to open up again here later in the year. I'd love for you to be a part of the community for sure. So let's first start here. Well, you know, if you're a leader, why is it important that you know the mission? Well, Michael breaks this down with a couple different points. He goes, a leader creates vision. A manager just executes the vision executes the vision. A leader inspires and motivates others towards a vision. The manager just maintains and administers a vision. A leader's way and take risks in regards to the vision. Managers just control and minimize risks along the way. Leaders focus on the long-term. 
Managers focus on the short term. I, I want to take a side here. One of the things that I've learned, and this is, comes from some of the different books I've read and different people that have really poured into me. We often think that, you know, whose job is it to carry out the vision? Well, it's everyone's job, right? That's part of this strategy and, and implementation. But I think what's interesting is really the person that needs to be most focused in an organization on the vision is oftentimes the person that's bogged down in the day-to-day. -day. The, the CEO, the chief visionary officer now has been developed in organizations. Their job is to focus on, are we painting that picture of what we want the long term to be? We're going to go through a little bit of that more, especially in when we talk about what difference does a vision make? Well, this is the example that I've used. It, it's helped me. It's helped me in actually speaking. I, I read a book from Andy Stanley, and it was called Communicating for a Change. And one of the things that he talked about in that book is if you're speaking, you need to connect with the audience. You need to hook onto them, kind of like a, a tractor hooking onto a wagon or a truck hooking onto a trailer if you're going to take it somewhere. Well, the other part of that is you need to know where you're going as a speaker, as a leader, where are you going? And that's the vision. The vision is the destination. If I'm sitting here at my house in Spokane, Washington, and I want to tell you about this trip that I want to make with my family, we're going to go to Yellowstone that we did a couple years ago. And, and I say, hey, how are we going to get there? I, I want to go to Yellowstone. This is the amazing, we can get to you know see Old Faithful and all the wildlife and the mountain ranges and just everything that Yellowstone is so amazing. And I paint that picture. I get them excited. Well, that's the vision. Well, the next part of that is, well, who all is going? Well, well, that's my family. Well, that's the mission. And the next part of that is the strategy. Well, how are we going to get there? Well, we're going to punch Yellowstone into our GPS, and it's going to give us the turn by turn. I hope that little example gave you some clarity in the difference between vision, mission, and strategy. It, results happen when they all intersect. Imagine three little circles, Venn diagram, all three of them interact. Remind, remember, vision is the GPS direction, destination. Mission, mission is who we are and what are we driving? And strategy is how are you going to get there? So I think learning and thinking about vision in that sense, and it gave me personally a tremendous amount of clarity. It's like, oh, okay. Well, now all of a sudden, let's get a little bit deeper and, and understand a little bit more about this idea of vision. You know, vision's important because, as I just described, I could tell my family, hey, let's get in the RV and let's go for a trip. And, and I drive them around the, the neighborhood and we just drive in circles and drive in circles. And they're like, where are we going? They're like, oh, we're going on an RV trip. But if there's never a destination, we'll keep driving on that trip. We can drive for hours. We can burn up a lot of fuel. We can stop. We can set up camp. But if we have no idea where we're going, if we don't have a destination, a place that we're going to, we can implement the strategy. We can have everyone involved in the mission. But without a vision, man, we're just driving in circles. And a lot of organizations find themselves in that place. Well, let me help you this. Sometimes it's, it's also important to identify, well, what's our mission? Michael shares this in the book. And to me, it was a tremendous clarifier. I've used this myself. I've used it with others. I'm going to share with these the four questions. So these are four questions that help identify a mission. Are you thinking about, wait a second, Tyler, we're talking about vision driven leader. Yes, but it's important to clarify the mission so you can really paint this picture of the destination, the vision. You know, it's kind of like I just shared you is I can paint this picture of Yellowstone and going to Yellowstone. But if I don't explain to our family how we're going to get there, or who all is going to go, the vision doesn't matter. Well, same here with the mission. So the mission asks these four questions and answers them. Who are we? Who do we serve? What problem do we solve? What transformation do we deliver? Now, what's fun about answering those questions is depending on how you answer them, if you really elaborate a lot, you start to really develop your vision. You really need to condense down the answer to those four questions and make it pretty simple. Maybe two or three lines. It's Michael says in the book, a mission fits on a t-shirt. A vision statement, you better bring out a notebook. It's going to be pretty robust. It's, it's going to be a lot more. A mission is a movie trailer. 
The vision is the entire full length movie. It, it's something, it's a manifesto that really is something bigger and more. Well, let me share with you this as we get into describing kind of this idea of a mission, the, excuse me, of a vision. I see I'm you know, tripping on my own words there and it confusing because it can be very confusing, confusing. We think in organizations, well, let's be mission focused. Well, you can be mission focused, but if you have no vision, it doesn't matter. You can't see, you don't know where you're going to go. A vision must be clear. People have to see it. Well, this is what I, I really think is important. You know, I talked to you about mission being the trailer. Okay. It's smaller, shorter, the vision is the full length movie. It's, it's an hour and a half, two hour long movie that is just this massive descriptive, every last detail. Imagine you're just, you know, describing to someone this amazing story that transpired in your life. You're not going to hit on just a couple details. You're really going to give it a lot of flavor and color. Well, that's what a vision does too. Here's what happens though. We maybe watch the movie once, take it out, you know, delete it from our, our hard drive or whatever. And then we think, oh, everyone's seen the movie. I, I, I saw the movie once. I don't need anyone else to see the movie. Well, that's where we get in trouble as leaders. <laughs> it's been said, once you're sick of hearing it yourself, you're about half done. Once you're sick of hearing the vision, you're like, oh, I've said this enough times. You're about half done. And I think that's really important because there's a part of me in different organizations I've realized I go through a lot of different things in my day. You do as well. Everyone you lead and you're involved in, they go through a lot of different things. And if you're not coming together and saying, hey, all right, let me just clarify. Where are we going together? What, what are we doing this for? Let me just make sure we're on the same page. We can get distracted. And, and if we think it's obvious to others, the reality, it's not. And that's when leaders get in trouble. They start to make decisions and they expect everyone else to understand they're making decisions that help them further get to that destination, that vision point. And other people, they don't get it. They can't see it. Help them out. Create clarity. Provide that picture so they understand. This is what I also want to share. A vision that's concrete moves people. If it's squishy, it'll confuse people. You might want to write that down. Concrete moves people. Squishy confuses people. I may just want to sign off right there. That was a pretty good one. I, I did have to go to the thesaurus and try to find a good word. I, I, I wanted to change squishy, but I stayed with it. So remember that. It's constantly reiterate. Share your vision. Be so excited about it that you want to tell people about it. And if you do that, people will be moved. But if you're wishy-washy, if you're here one day, gone the next, you're like, I don't know, I don't know. you don't talk to people about it. Well, they're going to find a different bus to get on. And that bus may be going to, you know, the Appalachian Parks, not Yellowstone. They may be going to Banff instead of Yellowstone. Well, if we want our organization to go to Yellowstone, we better make sure that they get on the right bus, the bus destined for Yellowstone and not the one going to Banff. Because one of them takes a right turn, the other one takes a left turn from where I'm at. Well, this is the other thing. I, I've used a couple national parks here in the United States. If you're in different countries, I know those are pretty, you know, Yellowstone's U.S., Banff is in Canada, yes. But I hope those allegories, those alliterations help you understand that it's so important to have that concrete part of a vision for others and inspire them. Michael states in his book, he said, if your vision doesn't inspire people, they're not going to go with you. Man, I don't know. You know. That's fun at first, but it's the inspiration of something bigger and better that's realistic, practical, that they'll bind onto. They'll, they'll grab a hold of, they'll bind with you and say, let's make this happen because it's important that it needs to be big enough that people don't see this vision everywhere around them today. Yet it needs to be not so big that they can't see it happening. 
Now, that's the thing with inspiration. It needs to be just far enough ahead of where you're at now to where you're like, I can do that. Because if it's so far in front of you, like, there's not a chance. I'm not down with that. I can't do that. And that's where it comes to practicality. You know, mission is the who. Vision is where. I mentioned that earlier. Strategy is how we're going to get there. Well, this is the last piece that I think kind of clicks into this practicality of a vision. It's an area that I've long realized is pivotal to healthy leadership. And that's values. As Michael describes it in his book here, he goes, values are the kind of people you're going to be on your trip. Values are the, the things that are going to bind you together and say, if nothing else, this is who we are and this is how we're going to treat others. This is how we're going to show up and be viewed by others. Because strategies can change. Your vision is, is kind of evolving and all of a sudden you get, to, you get a little different view. Oh, I got a bigger picture. And your mission may be, hey, you know, I got to fuel up. I got to, you know, maybe I got to change some tires. Maybe I need to trade out that old RV for a new one, but we're still going to the same destination. We're still going to the same place. That's strategy changing. There's going to be roadblocks along the way. Remember this, if you share the right vision, you accept those strategic changes, you hold on to the values, you're going to attract the right people. You're going to attract the people that want to be on the same trip as you. You won't have those kids kicking and screaming and saying, I want to go to Disneyland when you've sold them a vision of how amazing and spectacular and natural Yellowstone is. Here's the last part. I'm going to focus on before calling this one a wrap and you have to sell it. I have no intention of selling you to go visit Yellowstone. If you're excited to go visit Yellowstone, that's great. But you know what I need to do? I need to share with you the vision that I have. I have a vision that leaders are going to be healthy. I have a vision that they're going to put their arms around people and walk with them, that they're going to practice empathy, that they're going to be vulnerable and willing to accept their insecurities, that they're going to be sensitive to those around them, that they're going to choose to be active and engaging with people. And they're going to learn how to be patiently intense. And see, those are all values that I hold on to. That's a picture that I have a day when leaders are revered for how much of an impact they make in their community, in their world, outside of their everyday, outside of maybe their business, because they're so intertwined. See, to me, it's selling that story that's so important that needs to be done at every single interaction. I hope that I sell that here on these podcasts. That's why I do this, is I have a vision of a much better day when leaders all work together, put their arms around each other, sit down on a table, help each other grow and learn it's the only way I know how to get better as a leader. It's what's helped me. And I hope that it helps you too, because that's a vision that I constantly am watering and fertilizing and providing sunlight. Because if not, it's not going to grow just like any plant won't grow either. There's going to be resistance at times. And I have to accept that resistance and I have to see on the other side of it, not dismiss it. Oh, I can't be a better leader. Oh, I'm not in a leadership role. And the hardest person, but the most impactful person to lead is yourself. When you start leading yourself, it's pretty amazing how people start to look at you and say, all right, what's changed? Why is this different? Man, why do you focus on what you focus on? Now, just as I think it's so important for leaders to grow, so too a vision needs to evolve. It needs to evolve and, and grow with the organization and grow with the person. And, and not in the beginning, but all of a sudden you get to a point on your trip. You, let's get back in the RV. We're, we're on a, you know, eight of the 12 hour trip for me to get to Yellowstone. We're about eight hours into it. And all of a sudden I look over my wife, Kelly, and I can guarantee this is what she's doing. She's on her phone and she is planning the next trip. She's like, where are we going next? 
or maybe with even, you know, we get to the park, we get to Yellowstone, but now she's trying to figure out where do we want to go within the park? Let's, let's figure that stuff out. Cause now we actually got close enough to where we can kind of see it. Maybe we have some of that strategically planned out, but maybe it's not going to be absolute. You have roadblocks, you have, you know, traffic, you have, I remember when we were there, we had some bison that were just in the middle of the road. Guess what? They were there. We put it in park and we waited. Our strategy changed. That can happen with your business too. As a leader, you need to be able to zag and understand when to zag and don't wait until it's dead. Don't wait until you're done at Yellowstone, you're driving home, and you're like, oh, I don't have anything to look forward to. That's the day that no leader wants to be in. It really isn't. Because not only will everyone else be lost and confused, that's when they're really going to look to you and say, hey, help us. That's the greatest opportunity for a leader is to help others accomplish what they didn't think they could. To me, that's a, having a vision and painting a vision and being excited about a vision of a different world, different than what you see today. Because this is what I know. Everything that is great in our world today was made, became, because someone had a vision to do so. Now, maybe they didn't have this empty slate and they just imagined this amazing conglomeration of technology. But I believe this, one person had a small vision and then it led into another vision and it led into another one. And it's kind of like this. You know, it's like, I told you we want to go to Banff, we want to go to Yellowstone. Part of selling the vision and, and living the vision and continuing to grow the vision is telling people, we're going on a trip. You know what? I'd love to have you on the bus for as long as you want to ride it because I know you're going to provide value. You're going to bring great pieces and contributions to this organization. And when it's time for you to get off the bus, I'm going to say thank you for being here, and this bus is going to keep on rolling. Maybe I'm the one that needs to get off the bus and let the bus keep on rolling. That's okay. To me, that's a great day for a leader is to allow someone else to continue to take that bus to the destination and realize, you know what? I have a new vision for today. I saw something differently and I can create a new world. Who wants to come with me? As always, thank you for listening in to this episode of the Impact Driven Leader podcast. I'd love for you to join the community. You can go to theimpactdrivenleader.com. You can visit my website, tylerdickerhoof.com. Check me out on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Love to be able to share YouTube. Love for you to consume any of this content. And I really do hope that you grab this book, The Vision Driven Leader by Michael Hyatt. To me, it was very impactful, it continues to be impactful. And realizing now prepping for this podcast and getting ready for it to be part of the book club, how important, especially today in our world, that leaders continue to share a vision, to be vision-driven. Because our world needs more leaders that are vision-driven rather than just focusing on the mission. Okay? You need both of them. As always, I'd love for you to subscribe, share, rate, review. Send me any feedback. Let me know what you thought about this episode. If you got value out of it, I surely hope you did. A little condensed version today little easier on the listening time. Again, thank you for being part of the audience impacting my life. Till next time, have a good one.